What's up guys, so before we get into this video, I just want to let y'all know that I've been having some copyright issues whilst uploading this episode of the YouTube Boxing Retrospective. Obviously, this episode is about Jake Paul's boxing career and contains footage from Showtime Boxing, in which they keep copyright claiming me no matter how many tweaks I make. I've decided to just cover up most of the Showtime footage with a thumbnail, as this is hopefully the only best option to avoid those pesky copyright claims, but still have this video out. I know it might be a little annoying to watch, so I decided to leave a link in the description of the original Google Drive link that you can watch at your own pleasure without any cover-ups. However, for YouTube, we're just going to have to deal with it, unfortunately. But remember, there's a Google Drive link that doesn't have any cover-ups in the description, so you can just watch that. Anyway, sorry for the inconvenience, y'all. Jake Paul! Logan Paul! Any of the Pauls, I don't care! Bring it! So now we have entered a brand new era of YouTube boxing, the rise of the one and only problem child, Jake Paul. At the end of the last episode, we mentioned about the Jake Paul vs. Gibb fight with Jake winning the fight of course by round 1 TKO. After the fight, KSI and Jake had their face off in the ring which was building up to their potential fight. That was until, well, something strange was going on in the world. A few months after the Jake vs. Gibb fight, there was a virus going around called the coronavirus which caused the whole world to basically go into quarantine and shut down. This meant everyone had to stay in their homes or was limited to essentially going outside. Things like doing big events was also prohibited as the risk of catching the virus was at an all time high. This caused some trouble and doubts on if even this KSI vs Jake Paul fight would happen that, that year. But either way, during this time KSI wanted to focus on his music career and reach his goals instead of rushing to fight Jake Paul. So either way, with or without the pandemic, we wouldn't have seen that fight that year. However, with Jake not getting that KSI fight, he still trained and was willing to fight anyone, and we'll get into more of those details within this episode. Anyways, before we jump into this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and of course, turn on the bell to get notified for new episodes and of course other videos in general. Also, I would suggest you to watch the first two episodes of the series if this is your first time watching to get caught up with the timeline of events. But anyways, with all that being said, now let's get into episode 3 of the YouTube Boxing Retrospective. In summer 2020, it was announced Mike Tyson was coming out of retirement and was going to be entering the ring again since his last fight back in 2005 against Kevin McBride. Tyson would be facing the legend Roy Jones Jr. in an exhibition boxing match. This was a big thing at the time considering Iron Mike was coming back after 15 years and the fact it was happening during the pandemic was even more insane. On the undercard, the man himself, Jake Paul would be fighting, he would go against former NBA star Nate Robinson. During the pandemic, Jake still wanted to box despite the state of the world, and of course coming off that win with Gibb earlier that same year. Since his last fight with Gibb, he's been wanting that KSI fight to avenge his older brother's controversial loss, and Jake wanted to prove that he can truly beat KSI. However, during this time, KSI would decline the fight as he was focused on building his music career, whilst also there was a global pandemic going on at the time. This caused a lot of back and forth between KSI and Jake, claiming that KSI is ducking and is scared to fight. Because of this, Jake decided to move on and call out former NBA star Nate Robinson for a fight. This whole event would take place at the Staples Center on November 28, 2020. Ever since the Gibb fight, Jake has been training intensely and was hungry for a fight and ultimately wanted to jumpstart his professional boxing career. Nate and Jake had their back and forth through press conferences and such. From this fight, Jake Paul would hire BJ Flores to be his main head coach and this would eventually mark a turning point in Jake Paul's life. Most of the fight world and even the YouTube scene were excited for this fight, while also the main event as well because of Mike Tyson's return. But anyways, the fight begins with Jake Paul and Nate Robinson. In the first round, Jake Paul catches Nate with a TKO at first, then the second round comes around and of course, Jake knocks out Nate Robinson in which the fight would get stopped. Of course, Jake ended up winning this fight and because of this, Nate became a whole meme and this fed into Jake's ego a lot more. Here are some of the memes that came out from Nate Robinson's knockout. This fight really got a lot of mainstream attention as a YouTuber, Jake Paul, knocking out a former NBA star, Nate Robinson, and this would be the start of the rise of Jake Paul. 
After this fight, Jake would make a video calling out KSI about fighting him and claiming that KSI is scared to fight him especially after what happened tonight. From the fight, everyone was giving Jake credit and even claimed that Jake now had a better chance at beating KSI. Since the Logan fight, JJ has been focusing on music and hasn't been really training much whilst Jake has been hungry since the Gibb fight and has been training non-stop. This will build more hype for KSI vs Jake Paul but of course this was still happening during the pandemic so the fight wasn't going to be made anytime soon. However, Jake still wanted to fight in the next few months and not wait for KSI. Jake Paul then would call out UFC fighters like the notorious Conor McGregor and Dylan Dennis. Yeah, that guy for a fight. Jake made a video calling out McGregor offering him $50 million to fight. However, Conor didn't want to acknowledge Jake so he decided to ignore him once and for all. Since Conor wouldn't accept, Jake decided to fight his friend Dylan Dennis, who was also a UFC fighter. Jake and Dylan of course had their back and forths online and Dylan would even call out people like from the YouTube scene like Logan Paul, KSI, and even KSI's brother Deji. Jake even had back and forths and digs at the president of the UFC, Dana White, for videos, tweets, etc. Basically criticizing Dana White about fighter pay and I guess supposedly him not letting Conor fight in a boxing match for Jake. With all this going on, Jake's popularity would grow even stronger within the fighting community. Jake Paul coming at the whole UFC and MMA community as a whole would lead up to his next potential fight. Coming off the Nate Robinson fight, the hype for Jake Paul was at an all-time high within the influencer boxing scene and even to the mainstream fight world. However, there were some real fighters calling out Jake that wanted to fight him. Since Jake was calling out Conor McGregor at the time, Conor McGregor's friend Dylan was also trying to get involved as he wanted to fight Jake. Of course we know Dylan and Jake had their back and forths. They had one altercation where Dylan was doing an interview and Jake pulls up in the back of the truck and starts throwing toilet paper at Dylan. The clip of course went pretty viral and many people wanted to see this fight. So now will this fight between Jake and Dylan be happening? Well, no. Apparently Dylan was too scared to sign the contract and of course duck. Sounds awfully familiar am I right? So Jake had to fight someone else instead. Instead, he would be facing a retired former Bellator fighter and wrestler Ben Askren on April 17, 2021 at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Ben would accept to fight Jake and wanted to end Jake Paul's career for good. Jake and Ben had their back and forths in the press conferences, face-to-faces, etc. With Jake going against a real fighter, could things go differently? Before this fight, UFC President Dana White, who also had back and forth with Jake, claimed that he was putting money on Ben Askren to beat Jake Paul. It wasn't really confirmed with proof, but he said he would do it. Of course, Jake and Ben had a weigh-in. Ben came in at around Jake's weight class, which was around 191 pounds. He shut up with a dad bond and it looked like he wasn't taking the fight seriously. Jake weighed in at 191.5 pounds and of course tried to be a Conor McGregor wannabe. They faced off, but people were concerned if Ben could actually win or not. Anyways, the fight went on. Well, it didn't even go for so long as Jake would be able to TKO Ben within the first round. And of course, Jake celebrated like he's won the Super Bowl. Not a lot of people were surprised as they knew from the way in that Ben was going to lose and it was going to boost Jake's ego even more. Dana White probably lost a lot of money from betting if he actually did it or not. Either way, this fight really solidified Jake's name in the fight world and now he was levels above a KSI or any of the other influencer boxers. After this fight, this is when people started wanting Jake Paul to fight a professional boxer to see what he's really about. This fight blew the internet by storm. Even KSI was impressed but also still felt like he can beat Jake Paul himself. At the time everyone now thought Jake would easily beat KSI as he's been more active. Around this time we know JJ has been focusing on his music and he didn't know if he was able to find time to face Jake Paul. Jake himself even claimed that he was done with KSI and that it would be going backward if he fights him as he knows he's on a different level. So now with Jake having 3 wins in his professional career, where does he go from here? However, before we get into what Jake does next, let's take a little detour and talk about another Paul brother. So yeah, this video was mainly about the rise of Jake Paul, but another major event happened that same year that has to be talked about in this video. In late 2020, there were some rumors that YouTube star Logan Paul, Jake Paul's older brother, would be facing in the ring with the greatest boxer of all time, Floyd Money Mayweather. This blew the internet by storm and no one really knew if this fight was actually going to happen or not. Also considering the fact up to that point Logan has never won a fight, how did he get the opportunity to fight Mayweather? Logan himself confirmed that the fight would be happening and he wanted to make history and see if he can be the one to actually defeat Floyd Mayweather as a YouTuber. This fight was at first set to happen early next year on February 20th, 2021, but then it got postponed to June 6th instead. This fight would take place at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida. 
This was unbelievable at first, but now it seemed like it was actually going to happen. Logan Paul's former opponent, KSI, even rooted for Logan to win this fight, as JJ is always team YouTube, especially if they're going against the mainstream. Also, KSI and Logan seem to have let their beef go at that point. At this point, they were in like friends friends, and this was like before they teamed up to main Prime. However, they still gave each other respect, and that's all that matters. There was a press conference that happened a month early before the fight at the Hard Rock Stadium. Of course, Mayweather and Logan were going back and forth with each other. The man himself, Jake Paul, was also getting involved with this, as he would also pull off some antics during this press conference like untying Mayweather's shoes on stage, and of course the infamous, gotcha hat. Sir, get the paperwork for this ball. Get, get Al Hanna. Absolutely, oh, yeah, don't need yeah, Al Hanna. Let me call Al Hanna. I'm my own boss. I'm my own boss. One night, gotcha hat. Oh. Gotcha hat. Gotcha hat. Basically, Mayweather was doing an interview after the press conference, and Jake Paul confronted him to also have a fight with him the same night. Then, of course, Jake took his hat, and a brawl between Jake and Floyd almost spewed. Mayweather was able to land one shot on Jake's face, and this, of course, went pretty viral online. To be honest, Jake did help with the promotion of this event when he took Mayweather's set, as people started to talk about it more just because of this one thing that happened. It became so much of a meme that Jake Paul himself got a tattoo saying, Gotcha hat on his leg. Despite this, the fight between Logan and Mayweather still was going to happen as normal. Especially after the infamous gotcha hat meme, this fight had more eyeballs on it. Eventually, the fight between Mayweather and Logan began. This fight was pretty interesting to say the least. It was more so a hug fest and the size difference between the two definitely contributed. Logan weighed in at 189.5 pounds for the fight, the lightest he's been at, whilst Floyd was fighting at 155 pounds. But of course, Floyd had more experience, so this wouldn't be all that bad for him. The fight did, however, end up going all 8 rounds. Logan Paul was able to survive and be in the ring with one of the GOATs. Most of the internet praised Logan for this and said that this was a W in itself just for surviving 8 rounds with Floyd Mayweather, who's arguably one of the best boxers of our generation. Floyd and Logan had their respects towards each other in the end, despite everything that happened in the buildup. During the fight, Jake Paul was at ringside and, Tim and he thought that Logan won the fight, but let's be real, the stats say otherwise. But this was a big moment for Logan Paul either way, as this would turn his life around for the better. Especially his past controversies and his loss to KSI, this fight was a big W for him. A few weeks after the fight, Logan Paul would eventually collab with Sidemen and even invite his longtime rival KSI to his podcast, Impulsive. KSI and Logan would start forming a friendship, and this would eventually build up to them making a drink company together called Prime Hydration earlier next year. Now with all that being said, let's go back and continue talking about Jake Paul. After beating Ben Askren, Jake Paul became one of the most talked about names within the fight world around that time. However, with Ben Askren, it was kind of predictable Jake was going to win due to how both of them showed up to the fight. We know Ben Askren came in with a dad bod, and also Ben had a hip surgery weeks ago before the fight, so he was still bound to lose. And also, let's be honest, he wasn't that great of a boxer as well. So now Jake had to fully challenge himself. During the Ben Askren fight, former welterweight UFC champion Tyron Woodley was in the corner of Ben Askren for the Jake Paul fight. Jake and Woodley had their back and forth before the fight which would have built up to their potential matchup in the future. And well, you guessed it, it was eventually announced the fight would be happening. Jake Paul vs Tyron Woodley would be happening on August 29, 2021 at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio which was Jake's hometown. This fight was going with a different approach compared to Jake's last two fights. This will be the introduction to Jake Paul's boxing promotion, Most Valuable Promotions, as well as their first partnership with Showtime Boxing. This card would also be the introduction of many other things. Amanda Serrano, who was a female boxer, would build herself up with signing with MVP, and she would be featured fighting on the co-main of this card. This card would also feature no one other than Tommy Fury, Tyson Fury's younger brother, who would be also fighting on the undercard against Jake Paul's sparring partner Anthony Taylor. This card was stacked and they were even able to recruit many other professional fighters on this card too. The build up to this fight was also insane as this was supposedly Jake Paul's toughest test since his fight with Deji back in 2018. Jake Paul was criticized for his last two opponents not being boxers, so this time he decides to fight an MMA fighter who was actually a way better boxer than Ben Askren. Going into this fight, Tyron Woodley would shortly train with Mayweather, who also had beef with Jake Paul because of what we talked about earlier. Also, Mayweather and Woodley were pretty good friends, so it was pretty smart for Woodley to get some advice from Mayweather for the fight. The fight we rolled around. Of course, Jake and Woodley had their back and forths. They even had a face-to-face -face where Jake Paul was being a little sussy and was showing interest in Tyron Woodley's certain body features. Yeah, I see him like he got he got a big booty. Like that's part of the reason I wanted to fight him. Oh, he's thick. 
Like he's super oh, thick. I wanted to grip them cheeks low key when I first saw oh, them. Oh, see? These two are definitely building up some hype and entertainment going into this fight. They even made a bet at one of the press conferences. Jake made a bet with Woodley saying that if he loses, he should get a tattoo saying, I love Jake Paul. Tyron agreed to this as he truly believed he could beat Jake Paul, of course. This also built up more hype for the fight. Anyways, fight night came around. The talking is finally over. But before we get into the Jake vs Woodley fight, let's first talk about one fight that happened on this card, Tommy Fury vs Anthony Taylor. So as we all know, Tommy Fury, who is Tyson Fury's younger brother, will be facing against Jake Paul's sparring partner, Anthony Taylor, that same night. And we all predicted Fury to win this pretty easily. However, it didn't quite go that way. They had a pretty good fight, and Fury pretty much dominated it, but people were still criticizing him online for not being able to knock out Pretty Boy. Tommy Fury, however, still called out Jake Paul as they also had some back and forths during the buildup as well. And now it's time for the main event, Jake Paul vs Tyron Moodley. This fight of course was going to be 8 rounds and it would eventually go all the 8 rounds this time. This was a pretty decent fight. Jake was winning most of the fight. However, there was a moment in the 4th round where Woodley did catch Jake and almost knocked him down to the ropes. However, he didn't really capitalize on it which ultimately cost him the fight. Most of the fight Woodley barely threw, and Jake outboxed him and ultimately won that fight. After the fight, Woodley and Jake had a scuffle as Woodley was saying that he definitely won that fight because of that one punch he landed in the 4th round which sent Jake to the ropes, and that should have been counted as a knockdown. Of course, as we know, it was because Woodley didn't even capitalize on it, and he was just standing there. Because of the result of this fight, Woodley wanted to run that fight back. However, Jake told Woodley that if he got the tattoo saying I love Jake Paul he was supposed to get if he lost, he would run it back with Woodley. A few weeks after the fight, Woodley did get the tattoo, but it was on his middle finger. Jake Paul saw this and responded in a very particular way. Can I grab those cheeks now, Papa? So yeah, it looks like the rematch won't be happening. Or will it? After the Tyron Woodley fight, people wanted Jake to fight an actual boxer as he's only been known for fighting retired MMA fighters and athletes. People want to see how he actually does against an actual professional boxer. Lo and behold, after the Tyron Woodley fight, Jake Paul and Tommy Fury met each other face to face to ne negotiate a potential matchup in the future. A few weeks go by and it was eventually announced Jake would be fighting Tommy Fury on December 18, 2021 at the Mali Arena in Tampa Bay, Florida. Now this is what everyone wanted to see. Jake Paul against a legit professional boxer. Can we finally see how Jake would do against a pro boxer? Jake and Tommy had their back and forths of course to promote their fight. They had a press conference but instead of being in person, Jake was on a screen whilst Tommy Fury was there in person with his dad John Fury and his brother Tyson Fury. Tyson and John were also saying some things to Jake during their press conference which also caused them to get mixed in this beef with Jake and Tommy. The build up to this fight like Tyron Woodley was big and many people were actually looking forward to this fight. However, two weeks before the fight, Tommy Fury had to pull out due to having a broken rib. So this caused the fight to be cancelled, but not the event itself. Jake Paul's team called up Tyron Woodley and asked if he wanted to step in on two weeks notice to do a rematch with Jake Paul. Of course Tyron Woodley accepted it as he actually wanted that rematch since the last fight anyways. So now it was official. Jake Paul would step in the ring with Tyron Woodley for a rematch on the same date the original Tommy Fury fight was going to happen. Jake wanted to leave no doubt and fully knock out Tyron Woodley since he wasn't able to do that in the first fight. Even in the two week build up, Jake and Tyron were still able to build the fight despite Tommy pulling out. They had their face to face and Jake of course was being sussy and talking about Tyron's lumptious cheeks again. However, this face to face would set a different tone. During the face to face, Jake Paul would give Tyron Woodley a Rolex as a Christmas gift for taking the fight on two weeks notice. This was a wholesome moment, Tyron Woodley was of course super grateful, but he still wanted to knock out Jake Paul and end his career. In this face to face, unlike the last one, they seemed to have a little more respect for each other, but they also wanted to get in the ring and prove to see who's truly the better man. Anyways, the fight went on, the rematch we all didn't ask for but got, leave no doubt. This fight would go on for a couple of rounds, Tyron was landing shots as well as Jake, we didn't really know who would win. There was one moment in the fight where Tyron Woodley threw Jake on the floor which caused him to get some points taken away for it. This fight was going pretty slow and there wasn't really much interesting happening until the 6th round of course. Eventually in the 6th round, Jake lands that infamous vicious right hook on Tyron Woodley and puts him face down on the canvas. Of course the fight got stopped here and Jake Paul was obviously the winner. Jake's stocks went through the roof because of this KO and he was even praised by many people. 
The clip even went viral on social media which caused Jake to have knockout of the year. This was a big moment for Jake's boxing career, being doubted all the way to knocking out every opponent he's faced up to that time. After the fight, Jake Paul would call out people like Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal since he's also had beef with them. He even sent shots at Tommy Fury for fumbling the fight and saying it could have been worse if Tommy was in the ring with him. Either way, this fight definitely solidified Jake's name in the fight world and many people started to gain a little more respect for him. Twenty twenty one was a crazy year for Jake Paul and a real turnaround for his life. From being a Disney star to a YouTube boxer to then leveling up and beating up professional MMA fighters and athletes. Despite everything that Jake's done that year, people are still somewhat skeptical about if Jake is actually good or not since he's only fought 40 year old retired men. However, people at that time believed that he would still easily beat KSI as JJ also that year hasn't been really that active and was focusing mainly on his music career. So it seemed like the hype for that potential fight was about to die out. As we know, Jake Paul got knockout of the year award from of course the second Tyron Woodley fight. At this time, the hype for Jake Paul was at an all time high. Everyone truly believed that Jake Paul was indeed that guy. Anyways, that's the rise of Jake Paul. Thank you guys for watching episode 3 of the YouTube Boxing Retrospective. Again, if you haven't seen the last two episodes, I suggest you watch all these in chronological order so it all makes sense. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on this video. As I always say, I'll try to get these episodes out more consistently, but again, just know that these videos take a while to make, so please bear with me. I'll still try to make regular uploads, so don't worry about that. As always, thank you guys for everything, and I am Mega Shadow, signing out. Peace.